What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to the Crypto Remora. My name is Wes, and I am with, as always, Sierra Crypto, live in the flesh, ladies and gentlemen, with the, the TLD flesh. shirts with the on. Lost Donkey shirts. Thank you, TLD team. Thank you, Lambo, and all the TLD supporters. Very Hee-haw. comfortable. Get you one. Hee haw. Hee haw. Hee haw. So, yeah, today, guys, we're going to be going over some fundamental stuff what we're doing with bitcoin where it's at what it's looking like we're also going to talk a little bit about magic and why it's mooning going absolutely bonkers we're going to talk wes is going to talk a little bit about the what is it tip tip 23 tip 23 that went through and we're also going to do we're going to keep checking our positions that we got open because we like doing that that way you guys feel like you're watching it go up or down with us and uh we haven't added anything to it it's still the same original positions um we're also going to be going over and talking about our upcoming interviews we got we got some interviews with git.small coming next monday after that we've got el chapo he's doing his own podcast which is really cool uh both these guys are doing podcasts but uh arbitrum uh, I, I'm not going to say the name. We're not ready. We, we're not allowed to say the name. He said he didn't he, want us to he say. Want, it. He wanted to keep that. So we'll keep Monday, that in the yeah. alpha chat. Yeah, but um, it's going to be it's going to be fire content, you guys. And uh, yeah, I, we apologize for getting this stuff out late. We were trying to get this reveal, and we were having a couple of technical difficulties, but uh, we got it sorted out. So we're ready to roll. And I think we should just dive on in, man. Let's just go yeah, to the Bitcoin price chart. Let's see where we're at. Twenty four hours. Still, still, just we're killing that eighteen to twenty-four range, man. Twenty-two, twenty-two, nine, twenty, twenty-four. But it looks like we're coiling up for a move, man. You see how you see how big this move is here. Um, go to go to the twenty-four hour. You got the daily on that one. Yeah. Let's check see. this out because I want you to see this. The Jesus. So yeah, twenty three three. So if you see, just look at this one real quick, Wes. On this one, you see how see how long this this line is, yeah. and then right there, boom. Mm -hmm. Look how tight it's coiling up. It's like a snake. Whenever you see the yeah. charts kind of doing this number here, and they keep backing up, it's because it's getting ready for a move. And I don't know which way that move is going to be. I'm just saying it looks like we're coiling. I mean uh -huh. that that looks good to me. Seven day. Let's go to the weekly. Wow, we've been just going. Look at that. Yeah, sideways. I mean, yeah. It's completely sideways. I'm okay with that because that you know, mm -hmm. you earn your next level. I'm good with it. We're earning our our next level. Yeah. And whenever you see a pump that's uh, smaller than your consolidation, that's bullish in yeah. my opinion because you're only getting that little pump for all this con consolidation. So yeah. that 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 looks good. Um, what do you what do you think as far as the next the breakout? Next I mean, level. we've had the breakout going up but what, what do you see do you yeah. do you see this as a suckers rally disbelief rally or do you think that it's it's this is legit so i feel like with bitcoin so i, I the next thing i see happening is coming back down and testing this you know 21 five level you know we, we came up and, and you can see how we kind of did the same thing on this last little pump we came up to you know retested that um you know area of support came back up i think we're going to come back and retest 22 and then off you know past that 24 we got to get over that 200 weekly moving average um and you know once we get over that 200 weekly i see us you know coming up retesting 200 weekly and uh you know hopefully getting past that thirty thousand dollar level um and you know if if uh history tends to repeat well you know not necessarily repeat itself exactly but if it rhymes a little bit then you know we could be looking at that thirty six to forty two five range after you've been after you've the been saying K. that man yeah. you've been saying the forty k range yeah. back up around you know when when you first got in and when I was kind of had one year under my belt Bitcoin was just I remember we were at that thirty seven thousand dollar we were yeah. at thirty eight thousand dollars for God it seemed like forever yeah. it was like can yeah. we just get past forty it was right. like so boring <laughs> and now. You know, you miss those days, right? You're like, yeah. oh, I mean, the thirty-eight thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just shows you, you know. So do you think you think we're gonna head up? So 
Yeah, I mean, I, if, if we're looking at the time frame and the in the four year cycle, I'm a you know huge believer in this four year cycle. Just from looking, you know, zooming out and looking at you know uh, recent events that's happened over the years, I feel like uh, yeah, I mean, we're due. You know, if you look back 2018, 2019, you know, we went down for a year. It went down 83 percent. And um, about after exactly a year, we came up, we, you know, jumped 50 percent to that mid range, um, to that mid range level. So if we do the same thing and kind of repeat from the past, you know, uh, bear cycle, I feel like that mid range is the 42.5 that I was just talking about. Um, so that's not unlikely for Bitcoin to do that. I mean, it's it do, it's done it multiple times in the past, and um, yeah, if if you're familiar with you know how how this price action moves, it, it's very uh, common for Bitcoin to to shoot up fifty percent, come back down twenty, and then shoot up another fifty yeah. percent. Yeah. So that that level too, it, I don't know if you see it, but like no. you said, forty thousand yeah. is more like it, but. If you look at the twenty-five thousand to the thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, obviously we got to get above twenty-five. I mean, that's that. It's like 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 we've been yeah. saying eighteen to twenty-four. That's mm-hmm. why I said, really, it's twenty-five. Okay, let's it's twenty-five. But right, right. that's the first break, yeah. and then if we cruise on up to thirty, I don't I don't see us. I don't see us having to fight thirty as hard. I see us ranging between that thirty six to, to forty five. Yeah, I Let's think we 45. blow through thirty. I, yeah. I, that's what I'm just saying too. I, I feel like we're gonna cruise through if we break twenty five or mm-hmm. when we break twenty five. Yeah. I mean, come on, it will happen. Yes, we are gonna fly through thirty like butter. That's yeah. just what I'm thinking. But you know, who knows? But you know, a lot of people, especially if you're new into crypto, man, you take a look at the the you know past bull runs and you're like oh that didn't do anything man well no that's because on the chart it's it's a little blip you know but when you zoom in and actually see what bitcoin did four and eight years ago i mean it's incredible man i mean look look how little that looks compared to you know what happened the past uh bull run man it looks like um it looks like a little amp yeah, it's, compared it's to nothing. a mountain it's nothing so, <clears throat> Speaking of which, speaking of nothing, let's head on over here and look at um, what's going on with, you know, I just want to bring this up because, you know, it goes back to the Larry Fink thing we were talking about. Is it a deal breaker? Is, Is it monumental? No. But the first ever private bank to issue its own shares on the blockchain. Okay. It's not the bullish, the most bullish news in the world, but what it is, what it does show you is that it's a private bank accepting crypto, okay? Yeah. And the, the banks initially were fighting crypto, and yeah. they still are, but they realize that's a losing battle. So right. now what they're in the stage of is you're going to start seeing a bloodbath yeah. of all these banks trying to fight each other mm-hmm. to own all the crypto. Nobody's talking about that, yeah. but that's the reality of the situation. In order for crypto to really do what we think it's going to do, and in order for it to take over and really change the world and actually make it a better place instead of having it, you know, everyone like dictatorship over everything. Yeah. For crypto to really take off, the banks are going to have to fight each other for it. Yeah. Because yeah. mass adoption includes institutions. That's mm. that's the beautiful thing about Bitcoin. That's why I'm so bullish and that's why I like the philosophy behind Bitcoin because it don't care if you are one person yeah. with a job that makes seven dollars an hour, mm-hmm. or if you're a, a trillion dollar company on the Nasdaq. That everyone can buy Bitcoin. Everyone can own some Bitcoin. Everyone's yeah. free to use it. No one can stop it. No one can censor it. No one can block it. Yeah. You know, and I think you have to go back to the fundamentals sometimes and zoom out and look at what you're into. I mean, if you if you're thinking you're late to the party, I don't care if you bought at sixty nine thousand. And you're like, oh, I'm late. No, you're not. Bitcoin's <laughs> what? Just turned what? 13, 14 years old. Yeah. I mean, it's infant, infant. Yeah. I remember 14 years ago, we didn't even have, you know, cell phones. I don't think. I mean, we might have had them, but we didn't have no damn smartphones. Right. So 14 years is nothing, man. In tech, I mean, yeah, in tech, maybe so, but in in this grand scheme of life, it's not. Yeah. So I I just. I like that as a macro story. I think it's very bullish, and it shows the overall fight of how far crypto has come. Yeah. And even the FTX stuff couldn't stop it. I mean, yeah, they slowed us down, but they didn't stop it. 
Um, and that's another thing. Don't you get frustrated when you hear people saying that? It's like, oh, well, I don't know. The crypto thing's dead now because that Sam Bankman Fried did this thing. And I'm like, I hear that. He, he don't day even, almost. Bitcoin don't care yeah. about Sam. Yeah. Bitcoin's still running. Yeah. Ethereum's still running. Everything is still running. Sam, yeah, Sam is just the uh, <laughs> uh, little ant, you know, in a big world. Not even a blip. I mean, at this point, yeah, it's a blip on the chart. But, but anyway, yeah. that's what. Didn't you have something you wanted to say on touch on on this one or no? Which one is it? Um, on coin paper. So no, um, I did see an article. So last night I was in the. Um, they had an event going on for the TIP twenty three unlock. You know, with the magic or whatever, and um, a lot of the guys were in there talking about, you know, um, the females. Because I saw an article in there. Um, so the the growth for females coming into crypto was you, actually you, grown in the you're last. Gonna, you're gonna be talking about Wendy O again? Is I, that what this I, is? I might mention Wendy O. I mean, I have a little crush on Wendy O. <laughs> yeah, she can fight though, so I don't know. But no, seriously, the it was it was interesting because the guys were in there talking about how you know the crypto needs to you know kind of bring in the female you know um, investors you know and. Uh, yeah, it was just interesting, man. I, there was an article that was on here the other day that I shared with you that I was talking about that. Yeah, you know, um, it is it's growing. Been growing, man. I, I, I see them all more the time. And more into it, yeah. On Twitter, I mean, the timeline. I see them in NFTs. I see them doing art. Yeah. I see them doing the music. Um, you know, it. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna get involved and they're gonna be more responsible than the men are. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like the second most you know asset that women prefer over over. You know, cash, actual cash. And that's but. a big deal too. That's a big. It deal. is. It is. And and like I said, man, the stat was. I wish I had the stats in front of me, but the, it it showed that, um, you know, the female growth coming into the industry was more than men over the last month. And uh, yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, that's because a lot of the the guys that got in are, you know, all mad because they bought Shiba Inu when Bitcoin was at seventy five thousand dollars, sixty nine thousand, right, and now it crashed. And they're, you know, yeah. they're hurt. Their feelings are hurt. Right. And they're out. I mean, I, I talked to a buddy of mine last night, and he uh, he said, are you still doing that crypto thing? I said, yeah, I'm still doing it, man. He's like, no, I'm done. I, I'm out of it, man. And I said, well, how much did you lose? He said, $500. I said, <laughs> that ain't that bad. I mean, did that ain't going to change your life. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that yeah. ain't going to change your life, but... To completely give up, it's like you wouldn't give up on the yeah. stock market if you're an investor in the stock market and yeah. you lose. I don't know. I mean, it's not a lottery ticket, people. It's you know, investing is is a blood sport, but it is not a lottery ticket. You're not. You're not. The odds are not as horrible as mm. the lottery. I mean, yeah. if you can't make some money in the market, I mean, that that means go do your homework, study, learn how to read a chart, you know, grow, learn about the banking system, learn about companies you know it's like constantly be feeding yourself yeah if you're not making money there's ways to make money and speaking of that after we go to uh this here uh what else were we gonna say in treasure because i don't want to get too far ahead i know we were going to check the positions but um so we had magic hit a dollar that's crucial no magic hit a dollar blew past 40. it yeah blew past it hit a dollar 40 um after during the tip 23 unlock um i think a lot of people didn't realize that it was unlocked you know these people bought you know tens of thousands of magic when it first came out locked it up you know in uh, in the harvester and so did that already happen that release yeah, that already, already happened? already happened um and i think there's still a ton of magic locked up that people haven't unstaked or it's not, not just, locked it's at a dollar twenty six right now. Yeah, one hundred percent got unlocked, and I, last time I checked, there was like twenty three percent that was still staked. So people act, have to actually go in and unstake their magic to pull it out. And I just feel like a lot of people either aren't worried about it because they know magic is a good asset to hold on to, and they know it's you know it's it's a twenty dollar asset eventually. I tell and, you uh, what, yeah, if you look if you look at the all time chart for magic and you look at this what? Thirty five cent range down here forever yeah. in a day, it stayed at thirty, mm -hmm. twenty five to thirty yeah. cents, and then it came back down again yeah. and and stayed at thirty cents and then it went down to twenty five. Right. So you've got a massive yeah, accumulation, accumulation yeah. down around twenty five to thirty cents 
and you're just getting a little taste of a breakout here. I mean, it's not unrealistic to say that Magic could go back to two dollars and twenty-seven cents, um, or even this level here. I'm looking at this level as the next level, which would be around two dollars. So the breakout for this and how much resistance you can have. Let's see. You got one touch here. You got yeah, one touch here. Three. You got four touches on <clears throat> on two dollars. Yeah. So versus a whole year and almost a year and a mm -hmm. half of this sideways accumulation. So what's the, the reality for it to break past $2? It could happen very easily yeah, and quickly as soon as Bitcoin turns around. So that's very quick. That's a what? Just quadruple in your money right there by itself, just buying magic. Yeah. So, well, I was scooping it up, you know, at 30 cents. And, uh, you know, for it to be at a dollar, and it hit a dollar 40, like I said. So it's a good asset to hold. I can see why people aren't even messing with it and just leaving it alone, and you know they don't want to sell it. Uh, and I don't blame them. And Lost Donkeys, did you get a chance to play it yet? I have gone on there with okay. my good. phone, good, and it was incompatible. So, but I did go on there. I knew you got a chance to play it. I uh, played. I you played. About it? You, you just really what you can do right now, and unless they've changed it recently, mm -hmm. but we've been trying to get this episode out, so it's I haven't had much time to do that. Plus, dealing with all the stuff going on uh but the and the alpha chat knows what's going on yeah with with everything but as far as the the lost donkeys game you it's like the legend of zelda is what it reminds me of the map mm -hmm. and it's a huge map yeah i mean you you can instead of just going into one little world you go over here to the forest mm -hmm. and you i mean it takes a minute to get all the way around the forest so they're showing you that the game is not just this little you yeah. know, it's good. It it reminds me of that. And someone else said like Pokemon. It was kind of. I didn't Pokemon. really play Pokemon, but <clears throat> I didn't either. So I don't. Yeah. But Zelda, I played a lot on Nintendo, yeah. and it's mm -hmm. that. It really has that vibe. Yeah. And so for me, it brings me back to my childhood. Okay. And it's very cool. I mean, not a whole lot to do. You can go up to the little Easter eggs and stuff they yeah. had hidden. I think I found all four of them. Yeah. You you can kind of interact with them. They put a couple dots there. So. Mm -hmm. But you know they're going to well, do something. I was about to say, what do you think the Easter eggs are about? They're going to do something. I yeah. mean, that's they definitely have something up their sleeve. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out what they're doing with that uh, <clears throat> Hallelujah music yeah. uh -huh. in the in the office. When you hit the window, when you hit the window, you click on the window. That and then something about under the clouds. So they they've got something up their sleeve. I'm sure. Of course, man. You know they're always uh, cooking something up. Small verse too. We, which, by the way, Cheddar Bob. Shout out to Cheddar Bob. He's giving uh, ten thousand bones away. And you guys, Wes is going to put the tweet out tonight. Um, all you got to do is retweet, follow Cheddar Bob. You're going to follow uh, Crypto Remora, Sierra Crypto, and Crypto MacGyver. So four quick follows and a retweet, you're entered to win 10,000 bones. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll do the drawing for that probably next week. Mm -hmm. um, Toadstools, that's one that's been on my radar for a while now. Yep. The community is um, kind of kind of stirring up some stuff yeah and making a lot of noise so i i feel like i want to get into that um and yeah knights of the ether for natimus mm -hmm. i just want to touch on that because i know we're having him back on probably in a few months because he's really busy right now but yeah get dot small and el chapo we'll also tell you guys about that in a minute but let's let's head on over to oreo swap and check our positions oreo swap is dropping there's no no way around that. It's it's down to two uh, zero zero point zero two six. So it just dropped another point as we were sitting here filming. Yeah. TVL is around three hundred seventy thousand dollars total. So this is one of those ones where you get in and you say, okay, uh, portfolio management. You know, this is why I only put nine dollars in because yeah. you're not going to throw all your money into something when you're doing these these farms and stuff mm -hmm. because that's you got to allocate a smaller portion of your portfolio to these more risky plays. But the upside for them, I mean, I've already earned 11 Oreos. Now they're, they're worth less than three cents, yeah. right? But let's say the market turns around and people get their speculating gloves back on. Um, so I'm leaving it alone. So technically it's down. We, we started with about eight or nine. We've got four. See, I add it by adding my totals. Uh, yep. That's how I add it. It could be right or wrong to do it that way. That's just how I do it. <clears throat> so I've, excuse me, I've got that. And then I'm also in a pool over here with the Oreo. So let's see here. Earned. Okay. So yeah. So we've got 3.96 of them staked. So what I do is I harvest them out of the farms. So I hit harvest and then I'll restake them. And I'll put them back mm -hmm. into the pool. 
You're so I've got two different pools working, so I take my rewards and then I'll restake them. Yeah, you compound it. Now, that, that being said, of course, this position is down technically, but um, I, we're, we're going to keep it rolling. I mean, this is a good time to buy, actually. Yeah. I, you mm -hmm. know, I'm not going to sell my Camelot, but if my Camelot was unlocked right now, this would be a perfect example. Yeah. If you were to do a move to take it out of Camelot mm -hmm. and go hard into Oreo Swap. Oreo. And then when Oreo down. Swap starts to go up, you take some profits right. and you go back in. Right. So you can play that move. We're not doing that. We're just showing you. But um, let's head on, head on to uh, Camelot. And you guys remember, we started with $10, mm -hmm. 24 and 24 yep. That was the original investment. Now it's up to eleven sixty nine, thirty five thirty four, and thirty-five thirty-four. So yeah, I mean that's that's a that's good a little good run, game, man. man. I mean Just that's that's twenty twenty one dollars absolutely plus the uh, pending X Grail ro uh, rewards. Yeah, and you're looking at a, what a sixty dollar investment, fifty or sixty bucks, and yeah. you're making twenty. I mean. I'm just saying, guys. Don't I don't want to hear people complain. It's a bear market. There's no ways to make money. Yeah, and there's plenty of ways. There's ways to do it, and uh, we're showing you here on the remote. We're showing you some some cool stuff on Arbitrum, and we are forever hardcore on Arbitrum. There's just no way around that. Absolutely. There's so much to do on Arbitrum, guys. <clears throat> Is there anything else you wanted to touch on on this? No, nah, I think um, yeah. Uh, Natimus Knights of the Ether. He did his part three last night. If y'all didn't check that out, uh, you can go into the Knights of the Ether Discord and um, and yeah, check it out. He's got him uh, the stories posted on there. It was the story of Agnar, and uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but it was a very good event. So uh, yeah, go on there and check that out, Natimus. He did a, an amazing job uh, last night on the Knights of the Ether Discord, and uh, you'll go to Agnar. Agnar is the is the story he posted yesterday. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, this Monday we have the get dot small get dot small comment. He's been a, an amazing supporter of the crypto remora. He's gonna be coming on. He's uh, he's doing a a podcast. It's gonna be based on Arbitrum, and he's gonna be bringing uh, founders or potential founders to his podcast and give them a platform to talk about their projects and why they're passionate about their projects and why they're interested in Arbitrum. And if they're not already building on Arbitrum, um, he's going to, you know, just kind of run them through what Arbitrum is and uh, talk about the amazing community that we are very thankful to be a part of. And um, yeah, just give them ideas on, on why they should be on Arbitrum and, and, uh, and all that good stuff. And the name is really cool. Well thought out. Uh, the podcast, he, you know, we've been talking to him and uh, very well structured. Everything he's going to be doing is, is yeah, incredible. it's going to so be it's, it's going to be, be a good show, professional and yep. legit, and it's going to be well well put together. Him and him and Brainsy uh, dot Brainsy dot Eth or mm -hmm. whatever yep. are they're just they're sharp, man. Yep. They're sharp. Yep. They're, they you can see, man. Even when they send us messages about doing stuff. I feel like I'm in trouble. I'm like, oh, okay. It's like, all right, we got an itinerary in here, and say, so, like, they're so organized and on the ball. It's like, yeah. me and Wes have a lot to learn from these guys. So, yes, uh, and so. and we're getting there, you know. And that's that's the thing. It's like this is a slow process, but the tech alone and what Arbitrum's doing, uh, we believe in it wholeheartedly, yeah. and uh, we see a huge future ahead. And if you're if you're into this stuff now. You know, don't lose hope because you're early. You're you, this is your chance yeah. to get in on Ethereum. If you missed Uniswap airdrop like I did, and I missed it by two weeks, and I will not ever let that go because I'm mm -hmm. still mad about it. This is your chance to be ahead of the game on Ethereum on an Ethereum layer two that no one is talking about. Nobody's Dude, talking about. No it. one is talking about Arbitrum. Everyone is talking about Polygon. Yeah, and I don't. I'm not knocking Polygon or Optimism. It's I love it. It's all I'm all multi-chain yep. future and all that stuff, but I just feel like people are sleeping. They're asleep at the wheel on Arbitrum, and they're in coma. By the time it smacks them in the head, it's going to be too late, and yep. it's going to be sad because this community is fire. Yep. I mean, you get on Twitter, you got a question, and these these guys will help you. They'll send you a DM. They'll help you out. They'll coach you. I mean, it's it's very very. It's very cool being a part of the community. I feel yeah. like this is the first community I've actually been involved with. Yeah. In in Web three. Yeah. In, I mean, a, in a way. Yeah. Absolutely, man. These guys are definitely on point. They they love if if you're in Web three and and you want to be a part of a community and and you're looking for you know uh, a group to join or for a you home. Have questions or yeah. I mean, Arbitrum is definitely the way to go. 
Um, they they have a lot of great projects on Arbitrum, and they're growing immensely. That's your Arbonaut. every single day. Yeah, your Arbonaut is is bad, man. Yeah, that thing like is it. cool. <laughs> I like if it. If you guys hadn't already, check out Brainsy.eth's collection, the Arbonauts. I got to scoop a couple more yeah. of those things, man. And we got to do a deep dive on that RB bot thing. That's going to be some homework for us. Yeah. But guys, we appreciate it. Thank you for uh, being patient with us on getting this episode out. It was a long time coming. Yes, it was. A lot of bumpy roads, but we finally got it out there. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to doing more stuff like this. We're gonna we're gonna try to keep the format of keeping us on camera, so you can see our lovely faces when we do our podcast. Um, and yeah, that about wraps it up. That's it. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, show us some love, and uh, yeah, until next time, peace.